Well hello and welcome back to my workshop. Um, since I did the last laser video, which is only a few days ago, um, I've had such a lot of emails from you uh, asking for uh, more information about lasers because it doesn't seem to be too much out there on the net um, regarding tutorials of, of lasers. So here we go. And several of the emails have been uh, regarding glass uh, or, or using glass in a laser. So um, I've got a, I think this is a two millimeter thick piece of uh, glass um, which we are going to carry out some tests on. Now I've written a very, very, I, should, I suppose simple test card. It's just two little squares. One is a, a, a full square which is going to be etched and the other square is just a, a, a line square so we can determine the power level needed uh, in a 100 watt laser with a two inch lens to get the best result. Now I do know that some people use uh, a laser dry onto glass. Um, yeah, this is okay. Uh, and you get a reasonable result. But a lot of people... Um, now, I have not used this method myself. Um, I normally use acrylic plastic. And you'll see in my past videos that uh, I've done test cards um, with different power settings to get the best results. Because that is what you do. As an engineer, you... Um, you test equipment to get the best out of it. You do the same with a laser. Um, this is a particular t uh, 3D um, engraving grayscale test card that I developed, uh, which works very well in acrylic plastic. Um, I shan't be using that one on glass at the moment. Oh. Um, and of course, it's different power settings for different materials for different results. Uh, these are uh, what they call storyboards. In other words, uh, you, you get a permanent record of power settings and um, speeds for a particular result. So when you get a piece of material and a, and a job in to, to, uh, to carry out, you can immediately go to your storyboards and say, ah, that's the setting we need for this material and this particular job. Um, the washing up liquid. Now, what this does technically is it controls the fracturing of the, the, the glass. Because what a laser actually does when it engraves glass, it fractures the surface layer and it actually chips it off. Um, so that's, that's what happens with glass. Same as what with, well actually, it's not the same. Uh, it's, it's totally different with um, acrylic plastic because when a laser hits acrylic plastic, it actually evaporates it to a gas. It doesn't do that with glass. Uh, it chips it away. So what I'm going to do now is go to laser cut um, 6.1 uh, and I'll show you how the setup that I've got for my first test and we'll just uh, use the same uh, items uh, or test cards and uh, we'll just um, modify the uh, power there we go. setting. Um, so I've dr drawn two squares, one is filled, one is just a, a line square uh, and you'll see here one, it will, one is set on a blue layer, the other one is on a black layer black layer is engraving. Now I'll pull that one up first. Okay, so this is the setting for the engraving. Uh, I've set the engraving speed. Now this is the speed of which the, uh, in the carriage or the, the actual nozzle is going to travel. Uh, and that is 300 millimeters per second. It's about 12 inches per second, approximately. Bi-direction, 
that means the laser is going to fire this way and that way. So left to right and right to left. Okay. Engraving, blowing, yes, this, this means uh, we need the blower actually on. Now, when it says the blower on, it means the uh, small air compressor, um, which feeds air into the nozzle and uh, the underside of the lens to keep the lens clean, cool, and um, also blow away the, um, the resulting uh, emissions then uh, from the material that the laser goes into. So that's what that means, it's not the actual uh, exhaust fan. Um, power level 1, 35% uh, that is, um, power level 2, 45%. Now, as I say, uh, glass is fairly new to me, so uh, I've done two power levels, the second power level higher. I won't know until, well I'll know the same time as you, what, the, what's that, what that is going to do. Now then, scan gap, this is the step over, all right? Each time the laser uh, comes across the material, it will advance. Um, I've actually set it at uh, 0 0.1 of a millimeter. Um, so, which is a very, very small amount. I know that uh, the smallest dot or the smallest uh, size of the laser when it hits the material is 0 0.1. So we're going to get 100% coverage uh, on the glass. Um, down top, that means it's going to start... Uh, down top, that means it's going to start here, this, and work its way back. I believe. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Because um, I've actually forgotten. <laughs> now then, so that's that's okay. That's been done. I've already calculated that one. Now the cut layer. Now, obviously cut layer, it's running at 10 millimeters a second, so it's, it's running very slow. And I don't actually want to cut through the glass. What I want to actually do is mark the glass with a very fine line. Um, hence the power level uh, is 20% uh, um, and 25%. Now this is strike of the arc as it were, and this is in the corner. So this is the immediate fire up of the laser. Uh, we don't want it to cut through. Uh, this is the corner power. Um, so I think that's fairly self-explanatory. And see, I've made a mistake here, and I haven't got blowing on. I always use blowing for everything, because otherwise there are only muxial lens up, so I have to recalculate that one. All right, so now I can put that, uh, no, actually I can transfer that now to the, um, the laser, and we can do our first cut. So the first thing we do is we set the height of the nozzle automatically in this case and it's actually 9.5 millimeters uh, the gap is 9.5 millimeters underneath here here we go Very, very bright. Okay. That actually very nearly cut through. 
Okay, so that's that piece of glass. Um, the magnification level of this is um, is very high. That's um, although this is saying a hundred percent. In actual fact, that is approximately five hundred times magnification. Now this is the square that we etched and um, the step over, so each line that you can see through here is the track of the laser and each step over of the laser is a 0 0.1 of a millimeter. So every, let me see, and, and the actual fact, the, the la track of the laser, uh, let's make it a little bigger actually. Okay, so that's about a thousand times or thereabouts. Um, and it's a little bit like, it's a, you can see it's a little snowy, the picture. It's a little bit like a, a scanning electron microscope. I, I have a, um, a microscope here, a computerized one, which um, I use to be able to uh, explain to you guys what's going on. So the laser is switched on and run through and melted the glass to a very, very um, thin layer, shall we say, uh, at those settings. Uh, so each one of these lines then, these scan lines, um, is about 0 0.1 of a millimeter. And so we, we have a fairly good coverage there. I'll just take it out and show you what we're looking at here. So we're looking at this little square here. We're looking at this top corner here if you run your fingernail on it, you can barely feel the, the, the serrations there. Uh, and in fact, if I bring this up to the camera, uh, let's turn this around so I can see what I'm looking at. Uh, well, the camera won't focus on it so much. I've got light all over the place. So it's this little, you can hear that. So it's a very, very small line, scan lines. Now then, the, so that's the etching, but so this is the result of the cutting then. Now this is a 100 watt laser. It is a very, very powerful laser. Even, I, I know it doesn't sound very powerful when you say 100 watts, but bear in mind that that 100 watts is concentrated into a beam of pure energy that is smaller than a human hair. Now the power density of that is absolutely huge. So that's how a laser can melt glass. Now I wasn't expecting it to actually melt the glass like that. Uh, it, it's made a right mess of it. Um, and the power level was set relatively low. Um, so we're going to have to redu reduce the power level on this um, to do a fine line because all we wanted to do was a fine line. We didn't want to cut into it. That has actually melted through uh, about, a, a, about a, just over a millimeter deep. It's nearly cut all the way through. Um, so yes, so we're going to have to alter our settings and we'll do the same test again to see if we can get it to mark a line. What I'm trying to get it to do is just mark a line like this. Uh, in actual fact, this shows up broken, a broken line. In actual fact, it's not exactly broken. Uh, you know, it shows little bobbles here. Um, if I take the magnification down slightly, take it back down to Uh, take it back down to 100%. You can see that it is actually an even line. It's just the way the light is hitting it here. Um, let me just take the light down a little. I don't know whether you can see that that's better or not. But if you can see off to the sides here, not directly underneath the, the lens, you can see off the side it's much smoother. Uh, and in fact, uh, it, it gives a very nice representation and this is what we're after. First time lucky. It, 
it's done it absolutely perfectly uh, for an etching but obviously this is way too much <laughs> way way too much so what we're going to do is we're going to leave the uh, etching side of it and that's fine first time lucky uh, rather surprised about that but uh, that, that's good and um, what we'll do now is alter this one okay so I think you're going to see there's quite a marked improvement but it's still too much it's um, it's still melting it and all I want is a very fine line so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock it back now to the bare minimum uh, and I'm going to speed it up slightly uh, actually I, I'm going to do a combination of the both I'm going to first of all I'm going to do it at the same level which is 12 but I'm going to speed the process up uh, in other words the feed rate so the beam isn't in contact with the glass uh, for such a long time now that's going to improve the situation then I'm going to knock the power down and um, also alter the speed level as well and I'll bring you back in when I've done that okay so uh, there we were that's with the first one uh, which is a little bit too much so what I did I turned the power down gradually and um, I kept it at the same speed and that's a little better and now this one is a little better again and if you notice if I can get something very small to point with like this little green cut off zip tie actually so if I can point with that so you can, you can see some gauge some size there okay so here just here you can see the actual the glass is melting and fracturing you see the little fracture marks there so this now is down to uh, let me see that's down to 13 percent and uh, at 13 millimeters a second now so I decided to take it all right the way down you can see there is the, you can see the fracture line there of the glass but I mean that is very very hair thin and it is actually just still melting the glass there and you can only, you can just make it with a naked eye uh, so I took it down too far now that was nine percent uh, and of course the laser is only just firing there uh, nine percent and at um, 12 millimeters a second so this next one now this is at 10 percent and 12 millimeters a second so I decided to raise it back up and I'm getting a much cleaner line here now this is um, 12 percent and what I did, I took it up to 15 uh, millimeters a second of running time. And this is still 12% and 16 millimeters a second. And I think that's probably, for what I want to do is mark a line, a nice clean line. That's probably about the best. So we have found the best situation for uh, the laser, this 100 watt laser um, machining or etching and cutting on glass or marking glass. <laughs>